Hi, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. It's one of those words they don't translate correctly. And it's a Greek word. They, uh, well, there's another Greek word they don't translate. Is that mammon, which is an Aramaic word for money. But there you can see that it, uh, in context, it really means money. And that's the word there. And here you can see the unabridged Greek-English lexicon shows you the correct definition, stamp money coin. So I just think that if a lot of these so-called Christians would wake up to a lot of the things they don't, you know, they talk a lot about St. Paul, but they don't mention, you know, that Jesus told his disciples to go out without any money in their purses. And uh, he said, you can't serve God or money. You'll either love the one or hate the other, or hold to the one and despise the other. But the Pharisees who loved money, and they use a different word for that, the philargruan means fondness of silver, and that's in Luke there. So Jesus was a radical person. And in the Old Testament, this guy, Ezekiel, he's talking about the time when you know, money's going to become a worthless thing. And uh, so, I mean, like with today's June 20th, it's when that guy uh, shot all those people at that Batman movie. It's like really a crazy Batman movie. I watched the trailer of it and a lot of good special effects in it. But uh, yeah, why did this crazy guy uh, go out and kill all those people? He, nobody's seen anything on Facebook. He's like a real smart guy who well, uh, got really good grades in college and he got a master's degree but couldn't find a job uh, except like at McDonald's and so he s started to go back to school as a neuroscientist at the University of Colorado there but uh, apparently he just didn't like that and dropped out in June and spent like the last 60 days gathering some very sophisticated weapons. He had like a pump shotgun and uh, a Remington, I believe. And, and then he had a, a M16, which could fire like 200 rounds a minute or so. And then he had two Glocks, a Glock 40 millimeter, and I think, I don't know what the other one was. But uh, they uh, apparently TMZ found his he had a sex ad that he put up on uh, Adult Friend Finder, and it shows him with his orange hair, and he claimed to be the Joker. And I don't really follow the Batman sin. There's like only three layers, so, you know, I mean, I don't know, I mean, why would they need to fake it? I mean, like, it's very hard to tell where he was. I, they say he was, you know, his mother was going to school in, in Hawaii at that time. And uh, so I don't know why she would have been out of the country, but they, like, somebody looked for the records of the international flights that flew into Hawaii because if uh, she was in Kenya or in Indonesia, uh, and then it, she would have flown directly from those countries and there would have been, like, a record at the airport showing which airplanes arrived on, you know, the past month or something. But there was, like, a week... Uh, or two weeks of these airport flights missing. So, you know, I'm just, I keep an open mind out of it. You know, this guy Arpaio, he's not stupid. He's been a sheriff for 50 years, and the person who volunteered to help him with the research uh, was a detective in uh, New Jersey. And, um, you know, they're, these aren't stupid people. I mean, you know, this guy's head of the fifth biggest city, the chief of police, or she, the sheriff of the county for the biggest, um, fifth biggest city in uh, the United States. And uh, this murder, this movie theater massacre happened at a very convenient time to kind of like take our focus off this phony birth certificate. And um, so these detectives, they went to Hawaii to try to find out more information and the hospital has records too of every mother that came in there and had a baby.
but they wouldn't allow the detectives to look at that book. And so, uh, and our pyro kept saying, you know, all we really need to do is just show the um, microfilm of this birth certificate. There's a lot of other anomalies on it too, like the numbers. The and um, so he interviewed one of these. Um, people who used to work for the Bureau of Statistics in Hawaii, and she was saying uh, that uh, how the procedures worked and everything. But, yeah, there's some videos if, uh, about this thing. and uh, It's just, you know, like, where did this guy Obama come from? He, His parents, prob I think they had something to do with the CIA. You know, like in Indonesia, we were um, backing this guy Suwardo, who was like a dictator, and he killed a lot of people in, I think, East Timor, and um, didn't allow them to get their independence and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, the United States supported the Shah of Iran and and Noriega for quite a while, but um, I guess he uh, went against United States policy about something, and so they, they got rid of him. But uh, the United States has... Um, a lot of bad karma because of some of these wars. It's like the Vietnam War. It's one of the songs they used to play in the 60s and 70s. The guy was at the Woodstock Festival, Country Joe and the Fish, where they say, you know, one, two, three, what are we fighting for? Don't ask me. I don't give a damn. Next stop is Vietnam. So back then, like, nobody really knew what this Vietnam War was about. It was supposedly to contain communism. You know, the communists were going to, from the North Vietnam, were coming into South Vietnam, and we had to stop that. You know, we have to make the country open to Coca-Cola and Kentucky Fried Chicken and Pizza Hut and all these other places. Like, if you go to Thailand, or, like I did once, and there, I was surprised to see all these fast food chains, like they had a McDonald's near the place I was there in Bangkok, and they, uh, kids there would congregate on the steps of McDonald's. It's kind of like this one they have down here in Nogales, Arizona. The little Mexican kids from across the border like to go in there. But, um, so anyway, this, um, there's like, you know, you gotta have an open mind to these things like this 9-11 thing, it's just like, how can this building have come straight down? There was several, this was the third building in New York City that fell down. And you can see it's just like a, it just comes straight down. There's three seconds. It's just like at free fall speed. And this building housed, it had like the CIA headquarters in there. And they had a bunch of records that were destroyed. You know, I mean, it was a really a convenient uh, destruction of records and things like that. I wonder how many criminals, white collar criminals, got off or whatever. You know, but uh, yeah, they found uh, this. Um, there was like explosions. It just totally ex made this building turn into powder. Like there was inches of powder all over Lower Manhattan in New York City on 9-11. There's a pretty good website, this um, Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. They have um, a lot of architects and engineers, you know, they're saying, <clears throat> you know, these buildings had steel cores in the middle. That's what held the building up. And uh, so, uh, the, I mean, I never thought this building would come straight down. You can see the explosion there. That's they pulverized this. They're like at ground zero. There, you would expect to see curtains and doors and toilet seats and telephones and desks, but and tons of glass and everything. But like, if you look at pictures of ground zero, it's it's basically a bunch of steel beams and things like that. And they've even had steel beams that were ejected like 300 yards or so from the building that. Uh, they exploded, and of course that got us involved in Iraq for some reason. I mean, Iraq wasn't responsible. Oh, for, no, first we went into Afghanistan to look at look for Osama bin Laden, and uh, I think he was well. You know, it's like.
these guys that, that allegedly flew the planes, they were like patsies. They were, I don't know what they call them, that where you set somebody up to take, yeah, that's what a patsy is. But a lot, the guys couldn't even fly an airplane. They interviewed one of the pilots, the guys that instructed people to fly airplanes down in Florida. And he said that you know, this guy, Han Zhu or whatever his name was, couldn't fly an airplane. He couldn't even fly a Cessna. So we've got that big lie, you know, and if you look at these presidents, like, okay, um, it started with Kennedy, and of course the CIA killed JFK, and you look after that, you know, Johnson um, probably knew about it, and he got us into the Vietnam War, He um, and they're saying that Kennedy didn't want us to get involved in there, and, and back then they had a company called Brown and Root, and they were the ones that manufactured everything like I think they assisted in building bridges and things and or set up the camps or the army bases and things like that and it's just like Halliburton with Dick Cheney and he made all this money off of that you know and uh, so Eisenhower said that uh, beware of this military industrial complex well I think you know it all started I think World War Two was the real big clincher to everything, you know, if Adolf Hitler would have had his way in Europe, then uh, we wouldn't have this terrible Muslim problem there with these Islamic terrorists, and uh, I'm just so worried that the, at the Olympics that something's going to happen, you know, there's so many fanatics over there. In France, they would, like, have their own ghettos, and they don't want the police even in there. And so, like, um, yeah, that guy, uh, that other mass murderer, that Breivik guy in Norway, he was uh, a against this immigration in, in Europe. And uh, so um, there was a good movie. I can't remember what the name of it was, but it was like a futuristic movie of Europe, and they were expelling all the Muslims. They were forcing everybody to leave, and it was, like, you know, crazy and... Uh, so I just um, wonder, you know, like I kind of wonder if they're not really telling us the truth about global warming. It's like right now there's a really serious drought in the Midwest. So it's like it's the worst one since the 50s. And uh, a lot of the corn and uh, soybeans uh, were damaged and the price is going to go up and the price of meat will go up. But that's, you know, meat's not good. But people could eat corn and soybeans. And, uh, yeah, I like tofu. That's, that's pretty good. But, um, so I just um, wonder if they're not really telling us the truth about this uh, global warming. I heard recently that a big iceberg broke off of Greenland. And uh, so, like, it's like um, the water rises faster than they say it is. It's going to displace so many billions of people, like in Bangladesh and parts of Florida. It could just, you know, we don't really know what, what's going on with this climate, it, but it's really screwed up. And we've got all these fires burning everywhere in the West. And and uh, we had a nice rain today. It's really nice out here in Tucson. I know the uh, temperature really dropped after the, it rained. So it's nice and cool out there. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of fool's paradises in, in this United States and uh, there's like Los Angeles and San Diego and Phoenix and there was a book about Phoenix the how like unsustainable it is there because um, you know we're dependent on that Colorado River water and you know they I mean they've they've had big droughts here in the southwest before they believe that Maybe that was what caused these, uh, I think they were the Anasazi. They lived in like the New Mexico and and uh, if it dried up their rivers, <clears throat> then they couldn't grow their corn and, and beans and squash and peppers and things like that. So they had big civilizations. We can see some of their ruins in New Mexico that they had a couple hundred years ago or 800 or so I don't I think it was like 800 years ago and uh, the, you know the climate changes and if it does then the 
water rises and like um, people are going to have to move <clears throat> and uh, and uh, you know I just uh, there's so many problems in this world that like that Lieber this London bank setting the rates for interest they're um, they scamming on these derivatives it's and and it's all just funny money they're trying to prop it up somebody wrote an article they were saying you know like we first you know we had like the gold standard and then we had this federal reserve notes and and now we've got these derivatives to, to try to you know ensure that everything goes on okay and um, it just uh, i mean like where where are all these people going to work there was an article in the New York Times that showed like there's 25% unemployment in Spain and they're really having some big demonstrations there. It's like 20% unemployment in Greece and the uh, United States has like 8%. But, um, you know, it's like, uh, the, well, that guy who killed all those people in that movie theater, uh, the Batman movie, he uh, couldn't find a job. He had a master's degree in some kind of science, but... Uh, so we don't really know what caused him to freak out like that. It could have been, you know, just the despair of everything. You know, I hope they can find his computer and try to find out more. I mean, like, it's not, it's, I mean, it's just so stupid what he did. I mean, it almost seems like, you know, that guy Gerald Lofner and, um, and my friend was telling me that that guy, um, um, that killed those people in that Batman movie theater. He came to Tucson. Um, what the heck did he come here for? To go to look at going to one of the schools here. And but he, knew, but I don't think he met Lofner or anything. But so it's just like a coincidence. But but that guy, um, James Earl Ray, he uh, went to Los Angeles to like the same hypnotist that Siran Siran went to, and so like. Um, there's a lot of people that say that Saran Saran was a hypnotized uh, patsy, a, a Manchurian candidate, and so like uh, they, he was hypnotized and brainwashed. And some people are more easy to hypnotize than others, and they go into a deeper trance. And Saran Saran was one of those. It's called the Grade Five syndrome, and they have tests to see if you're highly susceptible hypnosis it has something to do with like they call it eye roll and they tell you to, to look up you know like that or something like that and they can tell by how much white is showing in your eyes so if you look if you look up you know, like that you know and and you get a whole lot of white in your eyes there then you're easy to hypnotize and uh, so that's how they can tell and like um he, you know um Lee Harvey Oswald was a patsy, it's, and so were those guys that did the 9/11 thing. They're they're set up, you know, and and they also have these things called false flag operations. But uh, so I mean, I'm wondering if, if Lofner and uh, well, then there's that other guy, Mark David Chapman, who killed John Lennon. I mean, he seemed like, you know, like he. I mean, John Lennon was pretty radical and. and you know, he had a lot of followers and just about everything he said people would listen to. So, and he was, John Lennon was hanging out with people like Jerry Rubin and Abby Hoffman, and they, um, they were against money. You know, they went up into Wall Street uh, uh, before they put the barrier up on the balcony there, and they threw a bunch of dollar bills down on top of all the traders on Wall Street. And then after that, they put a plastic plexiglass up, so you couldn't do that anymore. But those guys, Jerry Rubin and Abby Hoffman, were pretty radical. And if John, you know, John Lennon, he ran those full-page ads uh, that the war is over, if he wanted, you know, and give peace a chance and all that. So, you know, I think they they got rid of John Lennon and. Uh, and um, they do it like they hypnoprogram you to, like, Saran Saran created a diversion. They, they found a whole bunch of bullets. His revolver, I think it only had, I don't remember if it was uh, eight shots or something, but they found, like, 12 bullet holes in the pantry back there. So there, 
was more than one gun, and uh, Robert Kennedy was shot at point blank, too, and Saran Saran never got that close. So, you know, we've been run this whole country, like after they killed Kennedy, we had Johnson who got us involved in the Vietnam War, and then, um, then we had like uh, Gerald Ford, who was on the Warren Commission, and then we had Nixon, who was in Dallas on the, the day before the assassination. Allegedly, he was there for a Pepsi convention or to talk to the president of Pepsi, uh, Don Kendall. And they have a picture of him with Don Kendall in the Dallas News and uh, newspaper. So uh, anyway, like, you know, they have tapes of Nixon <clears throat> talking. I think he's talking to Halderman or somebody about the the hush money they were going to give E. Howard Hunt. And the hush money could have, and Kennedy, the, Nixon had a, a code word. He said the whole Bay of Pigs thing is going to, explode. It's all on my website if you go to my JFK thing. So it's very interesting, some of the quotes I have on there. It's like, so Nixon was aware of it, and of course George Bush Sr. was the head of the CIA, and some of the ships that were involved in the Bay of Pigs were, uh, one of them was named the Barbara, and um, after George Bush's wife, and, the, or, and then the other one was named after his mother or I got it wrong, I got it the other way around, but that's, uh, so, you know, there was a lot of this anti-Castro stuff going on when Kennedy was there, and they were all mad at him for blowing this Bay of Pigs thing. So a lot of people wanted Kennedy dead, the big business didn't like him, Kennedy was uh, going after the steel companies for fixing the prices. And so, like, we've had a coup d'etat in America, and the CIA has been involved in coup d'etats all over the world. But anyway, I won't be here for another, till September, like around September 20th. And uh, they'll be playing this over again. But uh, check out my website and uh, we've got to figure out a way to, to make things right in this world because uh, the way things are going, it's just... Uh, not too good. Anyway, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. Bye.